A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Get in the long tube with a bunch of demons. Really believe that human beings are demons. No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. There's probably a, a balance between, I believe you have to know Christ, but I think no. He is. And someone knows this for sure. All of mankind is going to end up somewhere in heaven. My mission really is to just help people of faith, especially, to re-examine this issue, to realize the church has got things wrong in the past. For those who are God by faith in His Son. Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 3, 7. Victory in the, the name which is above every name. No exception for rape or incest. Uh, it's an extreme. Right now, bones, ligaments, tendons, in Jesus' name. Get out here right now. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Master's Dog, episode 76. I'm your host, The Evangelical Norm. So The Master's Dog is a podcast where I deal with false teachers. Uh, just like the quote says at the beginning of the intro video, uh, a dog barks when his master is attacked. I'd be a coward if, my, if God's truth was attacked, and yet I would remain silent. So that's the whole premise of doing this podcast. It started out as Faith and Beliefs Refuted, the Saints Unscripted, formerly known as the Three Mormons podcast, did a started a segment of their podcast called Faith and Beliefs, and it started out with the LDS Articles of Faith. And when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I want to respond to those videos as they talk about the Articles of Faith so I can break it down and, and show why that is not Christian. And then it became a commitment that every one of those videos they did, I was going to respond to it. And then later on, it expanded dealing with all kinds of other false teachers besides just Mormonism. So that's the kind of the background on why I do this podcast and what it's all about. For those of you who might be new and just joining in, a uh, little bit of background. So today we are back with our friends from uh, Saints Unscripted, the uh, faith and belief segment of their podcast. We're going to respond to the latest video that just came out yesterday. Um, again, it's kind of one of those things where it has some weight and it's been, it been talked about in the past, but it's really not that big of a deal. It's not something that we as uh, Christian apologists dealing with Mormonism really get that much into because it's kind of a, a, a not a real clear subject that he's going to talk about. There's not a whole lot known about the Danites. I mean, we know a little bit. There's rumors. There's things have been written. You know, we know about Porter Rockwell and stuff like that. But there's really not a whole lot, so it's not a big deal. But again, they're, they're putting it out as something that's important as their faith and beliefs. So we'll respond to it, and then we'll see uh, how God is going to use that for his glory. So all that being said, here is our friend David 
from Saints Unscripted with uh, who are the Danites in Latter-day Saint history. All right, guys, so after being driven from their homes by mobs of Missourians in Jackson County, Latter-day Saints were eventually allowed to build their own city in Caldwell County called Far West. But as Saints poured in from Kirtland and other areas, by 1838, the Missourians started to get nervous again. The Saints and leaders in Far West were also getting nervous, particularly when it came to a few people who had left or were excommunicated from the church, but continued to live in the city. In June 1838, Sidney Rigdon gave his famous SALT sermon, in which he essentially said he believed that apostates should be driven out. At about the same time, a new organization materialized called the Danites, who took it upon themselves to put Rigdon's words into action. This 10-year-old birthday boy just shouts, <laughs> Let's do it! Again, I don't, I don't get the little random clips. Uh, it, it, to me, it almost feels like it's insulting. Um, sorry, someone ringing my doorbell. Um, uh, any good podcaster would probably have turned their phone off before uh, doing that. So, oops, there we go. Um, yeah, so back to what we were talking about. I don't get the... the the little clips. Some of them, I know I've, I've explained a lot of it, is when the, you get into a real weighty situation, a weighty topic, those things are used to kind of deflate the situation is really what it is. So um, putting it in a place like that, it just doesn't, it's, it's, to me, it's like I said, it's almost insulting that they're saying you can't watch a video long enough of just kind of explanation without these little things. Because again, that's what culture tells us that's what everybody says was, makes a really good podcast is to put these in there um, because you the the, the viewer uh, don't have the ability to focus for long enough to uh, pay attention to an entire video so there's my my two cents on that okay so here's the deal unless you're super familiar with the Danites honestly forget everything you've heard about them empty your mind Empty my mind. For decades, people have taken the fact that there were some secret elements to this society as permission to say whatever they wanted about them. The vengeful Danites show up in dozens of 19th century fiction novels, and even today, people think the Danites were basically the church's secret hit squad up through the days of Brigham Young. We are here to offer you a second chance. Oh, shit. Oh. I thought you were here to, you know, send us out with the fishes. But the actual historical record paints a very different picture. The group was originally called the Society of the Daughter of Zion, founded by Jared Carter, George Robinson, and Samson Avard, with Avard as spokesman. Their purpose was initially to warn out apostates whose actions were thought to be a threat to the church. We now and never come back! Warning people out of town was not a very nice thing to do, but it was fairly common in 19th century communities. Ah, and stay out! <laughs> and it happened to the saints many times, not that that justifies it. After the apostates in question were gone, this is... But it really sounds like you're trying to use that to justify it. And that's, that's one of the things, is, is anytime you're, you're saying something and you go that direction, and then you go, well, not that it justifies it, but ultimately you're kind of using it to justify it. Society of the Daughter of Zion essentially became an independent militia called the Danites. As a matter of fact, both Danite and Caldwell County militia members marched publicly during Far West's 4th of July parade. Since it was technically legal to form an independent militia company, Mormon leaders and Danite officers likely considered the creation of the Danite Corps to be a division of the county militia. So the line between the county militia and the Danites became very blurred, especially since many Danites were also members of the official militia. That said, the Danites were not recognized as an official independent militia by the state, which made them a paramilitary group. And their more secretive side, which we'll talk about in a moment, definitely differentiated them from the regular militia. Despite all the rumors, the Danites really didn't do much at all. I did nothing. I did absolutely nothing, and it was everything that I thought it could be. 
They existed from June to October 1838, only five months, and there were only ever about 300 of them. The events they're associated with are mostly not even Danite operations. They were simply participants in other wartime military operations, such as the strategic pillaging and burning of Gallatin and Millport, which we'll talk about in another episode. There's one instance where many Danites and Danite leaders visited the unfriendly justice of the peace, Adam Black, and pressured him into signing an affidavit stating he would treat the saints fairly, which is like something you should do anyway. Why can't we all just get along? Okay. If it's something you should do anyway, why was there a need for pressure to force him to sign something in that vein? And what kind of pressure? What are we talking about, kind of pressure? When you get a whole bunch of people that show up like that. And, and there's another thing that I'm going to connect, but we'll do that at the end of the video. But that was just, question came to mind. Yeah, granted, it, it, the judge should treat LDS, the Mormon people, very fairly, but... Does that mean you send a, a group of men to essentially bully him into signing a paper saying he will? That said, it was the radical teachings promulgated within Danite ranks that I think are most disturbing to people today. Samson Avard and others had Danite members meet in secret. You were initiated into the group with an oath of secrecy under threat of death. And if I do, may I die slowly and painfully and suffer mm. for hours? or until I scream bloody murder. The first rule about Danitism was that you do not talk about the secret side of Danitism. Okay, so here's another question. How similar was that to the oaths that were taken in the LDS temple? How similar was that to the oaths taken in the Masonic temple? Uh, and yeah, so these oaths, and it, it, is, it is problematic. It's problematic in any group like that, and even more problematic that that group is very much connected to a specific church. That's the thing that David leaves out as he talks about all of this, is the specific connection to the LDS church. The Danites were Mormons, not just militia. First rule of Fight Club is, you do not talk about Fight Club. They had secret signs to recognize each other by. They took an oath of allegiance to support one another no matter the circumstances. If someone did something illegal, they vowed to protect them until they could be tried within the Danite justice system instead of the official government system. And radical loyalty to the first presidency was used as sort of a rallying cry for Danites, even though it's doubtful anyone in the first presidency was actually an oath-taking member of this group. Joseph Smith was very aware that the Danites existed and even attended some of their meetings. According to the church's website, historians generally concur that Joseph Smith approved of the Danites, but that he probably was not briefed on all their plans and likely did not sanction the full range of their activities. According to the testimony of Reed Peck, Samson Avard did not explain to the presidency what his teaching had been in the society. But just how involved Joseph and the first presidency were with the Danites is still a murky issue, and where you stand on it will largely depend on whose story you choose to believe. After the war in 1838, Samson Avard was arrested and immediately broke his secrecy oath, claiming the whole Danite thing was all the first presidency's idea. No, it wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. Which was exactly what the court wanted to hear. It's one of the reasons why Joseph and other leaders were sent to Liberty Jail, where they stayed during the winter of 1838. Meanwhile, Avard got off scot-free, and not surprisingly, wasn't killed for breaking his super-secret oath. And there was much rejoicing. You can believe Avard, but there are quite a few reasons to be skeptical of his testimony, which I have linked to in the YouTube description of this video. Researcher Leland Gentry wrote, Not until the trial was in progress did Joseph Smith and his close associates become aware of the full extent of Avard's work. And from prison, Joseph denied involvement with the many false and pernicious teachings of Samson Avard. Anyway, to sum this all up, wild stories about the Danites have led many to believe they were basically the church's own League of Shadows. But the truth is, they were more on par with the mystery men. Check out the notes and links in the description for more info on this topic, and have a great day. Okay, so, um, I really don't buy the fact that Joseph Smith was not aware of what was going on. Here's the deal. 
this is a dude that went in and destroyed a printing press because they were writing things about him marrying 14-year-old girls. So to think that he would be opposed to the things that Avard and the Danites did is kind of a stretch. Porter Rockwell, again, being a member of the Danites as far as I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but was basically Smith's personal bodyguard at one point. Joseph Smith actually prophesied about uh, um, Porter Rockwell, which I believe is in the Doctrine and Covenants. And um, so, yeah, I, I really think that the Danites were kind of uh, the the attack dogs of the LDS Church at the time, because Joseph was. I'm, I'm pretty sure he was tired of being driven out of city after city after city, and when they came up with a, an a ability to create a group like the Danites, they did it, and I, I have no doubt about it. But again, this is not something that we as apologists use. In, in it's a it's a part of LDS history, but it has nothing to do with the validity of them as a actual church. I mean, it would be really odd to have you know your Presbyterians out there with a military arm of the Presbyterian Church. Now, given recent activities in in the world today, I, I, not a far gone conclusion. I mean, there are actually, I, I could see if religious freedom and things like that kind of went to the wayside in America as socialism becomes more and more prevalent as these, uh, potentially we, we have a, a president and vice president team could possibly come up here in the next week or two that are very much in line with socialism, that are very much a threat to religious freedom. And so, I mean, I don't see it happening anytime soon, but as those freedoms go downhill over time, as they do in all these places where communism comes to, to the forefront and, and reigns, I could see churches like Christchurch in Moscow or Apologia or even Refuge creating a militia-style group to protect the people in the church. I could see it happening down the road. Not tomorrow, but it would still be weird right now, which is what makes the Danites so weird. You literally had, <clears throat> you know, a military arm. I mean, you said it in the video, David, that paramilitary group specifically connected to the LDS church. It's a little weird, but it has nothing to do with the, the doctrine and uh, false doctrine of the Mormon church. So it's kind of a, it, it's something that, that you'll get guys that, that learn a lot about, you know, really, really smart guys like Dr. White, like Dr. James White, who basically knows everything. The man has like an encyclopedia in inside of his head. I don't have that. So Dr. White probably knows everything there is to know about the Danites, Matt Slick, uh, Bill McKeever, even Aaron Shafawala, probably, I don't know the, as much about the Danites, and I really don't care to know. And I'm not going to use that in any kind of discussion as I'm sharing the gospel with people on the street. Neither is Dr. White, neither is Jeff Durbin, neither is Aaron, neither is Matt, neither is Bill. None of these guys are going to use that kind of thing as, a, as something to try to share the gospel with someone on the street. It's just trivial knowledge that... Some of them have because it's part of the, the LDS history, but it's really kind of pointless uh, as far as dealing with apologetics and true and false doctrine. So there you go, guys. There's our uh, episode 76, the Danites, and I hope it was helpful. I hope uh, you guys enjoyed it. Um, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notifications bell. Get all the other stuff that is released through here, the Master's Dog False Teacher of the Week. Uh, let me tell you just the, the general political kind of current events podcast, uh, the fifth seal, the persecuted church podcast, and of course, unsolicited, which seems to be kind of my most popular stuff where I deal with like music, books, movies. I'm actually going to be 
uh, dropping a couple of movie reviews coming up here soon and hopefully a couple of book reviews as well along with uh, Strax album came out so that'll be coming up oh by the way wanted to really quick give, give another shout out to let me move that microphone for a second and see if I can be a good model uh, for now I see clothing uh, Lou and Violet Chikuni uh, hooked me up with a shirt and so they are the unofficial sponsors of this week's podcast because I'm wearing the shirt that they gave me so uh, go check them out I see clo- I see now I see clothingbrand.com I'll put the uh, link in the description um, and thanks guys for hanging out uh, as always preach the gospel at all times use words they're necessary and until next time Soli Deo Gloria